Yeah, you're not going to like the rest of it for the powers that be. <laughs> so, continuing on from Tuesday, but first I have to welcome all of you that um, are still with me. Got some nasty emails, which is awesome. <laughs> yeah, I, I realize there is some hot and heavy denial going on right now, which is okay, you know, it's okay. Deny it if you wish, because you don't have to listen. So I'm going to welcome turtleislandnews.info. I've got a whole bunch of new articles up and help yourself. Um, again, thank Revolution Radio Studio A for broadcasting me today. The entire Awake Radio Group. Good morning. Scottish sovereigns on the land. People for the people. That's an awesome one too. And again, Wolf Spirit Radio. Why are the black churches burning? If I'm just imagining these things. Seriously. Why are they burning right now? Probably hallucination, right? Couldn't possibly be happening. I've brought up and put up another video for you. From JFK to 9-11. It's about a three and a half hour video if I missed anything about your educational system. And it's our educational system. This is worldwide now. This is not new. It's what's been going on here for a very long time. Something strange too. There is helium leaking from a massive earthquake fault in LA. And they found that a, a fault zone in Los Angeles Basin is far deeper than previously thought. <laughs> I laugh because we have reached the crossroads we may already be well past it. What is helium? Helium is a noble gas. There is no name ever used on this planet in any language that is an accident. Helium is a big deal. Helium is related to ether. We are talking about even methane. Methane is very important. We've had many methane leaks as well. Methane. Methane needs to be looked at. Uh, not exactly a noble gas, but we are talking about archons and eidolons and gregors, which I've mentioned before. These are standard things. Helium and methane, life and death. One makes you laugh, the other will kill you. I'm not looking at good or bad here. I'm looking at black and white, hot and cold, up and down. All of these things on its own are both good and bad. When we look at our bodies, how we're made, we must look deeper than the scientists wish you to go in all things because it's absolutely vital for your existence now to know what you're doing here. We all can be triggered. We have been taught from birth to be triggered. We have been taught for generations to be triggered. They don't even have to trigger you. They just tell you what to do. You know, we've talked about MK Alter plans. We've talked about all of the different 
things that they've done to train us. But you need to realize there is no one on this planet that connects to the Western civilization. And that's pretty much all, again, except for North Korea, the Kogis, maybe one or two other clans that we will never hear of because they're smart enough to stay the heck away from this. There's nothing okay about what's going on right now. Nothing. The mother's already making plans. She has already made some choices more and more. Now it's even higher creatures. We've talked about it again. That are hibernating. They are getting smarter. And it's obvious that they are getting smarter. And we are slow unto death. Not all. Of course you will never get all in any of the things I say. So when I say the Prussian system was about mind control, I'm not talking about the Prussian people. Okay? Or Russian, German, and some other things, of course. Everything is a rich man's trick. Everything. All about what is happening on this planet right now. There's something ancient that we have, that plants have, that all animals have, and it's called kind of a colloquial term, limbic resonance. Of course, presented as a theory because it's the truest thing I've ever read. It is the capacity for sharing deep emotional states awareness that lies in the limbic system of your brain. Something ancient, something we've been told to be afraid of, but something that all animals have. It is the communication system that links us all. So when I've told you before that when certain species dies, we feel it. You know the giraffe is on that list. Many species are on that list right now. And animals who we have caged and tortured and used for our pleasure because when you're in a system of slavery, which we are, and I am not excluding any shade of skin here, you're in a system of slavery and you have been beaten for decades you cannot evolve to higher thought. Not possible when all you're getting is the stick. That's all you get. You get fear. And that's about it. You get fear and violence. A nice horrific combo of emotional dependency. And with women, well with women, we saw we fall in love with those a-holes. We will escape and go back to this, a guy that is exactly the same or a situation that is exactly the same when we've given up those guys. We are trained. We fall in love with the children of the master. This is why any girl, any woman would watch, I don't know, Cadassians or some sort of magazine with girls you will never look like, men that you will never have. And this is the training here. That's how deep it is. You may have not have looked at it that way, but that's exactly what it is. You are falling in love with the master. You can never be them. You will never be them. You will never be included no matter how high you jump or you run or you sing. Well, you'll be included as one of their little playthings. As I've said before, they want you to entertain them. They have no use for you anymore 
as a scientist. Science has made its last freaking play. Because the moment that the Big Bang summed up all of the scientific arcana, that means the holy grail of scientific endeavor. Besides knowing what particles were present at the point of origin when this universe began. 13 billion dollar project carried out just to find out boson. Which is interesting in its own, but which could lead to the possible discovery of what? Dark matter. <laughs> they were searching for what is inside of you. Not some other guy. Not some cross-dressing pedophile who hates women. So they can't even cross-dress, right? So how does it make you feel to really know you had at least 13 billion dollars worth of equipment on you right now. Do you feel a little bit richer? In the clutch point of our existence, spiritual growth itself resides in us, answering the question, where did we come from? What happens after death? No matter how riveting that answer may be, the scientific approach will always be inadequate to define any kind of moment like this. When the greatest acts of feeling are present, this is our most noble thing. This limbic resonance. It is the capacity for sharing deep emotional states rising from that ancient part of the brain. These include a dopamine circuit, feelings of empathy, harmony, another circuit that kind of originates all emotional states of fear too, anxiety, anger, or violence may come from there. All things are good and bad. And they have spent a lot of money on this, too. One of three interrelated concepts here is that our brain chemistry, our nervous system, are measurably affected by those closest to us. Not only that, but by those like us can be across the world. It could be if there are enough of each other we trigger each other for this. Our systems actually start to synchronize and there's nothing you can do about it. They synchronize with one and another in a way that has profound implications for personality, for long-time emotional health, limbic regulation if you want to look that up. And these patterns can be modified. Limbic revision. Our capacity for empathy, our nonverbal connections that are present in all living things and especially all the mammals but all living things here that forms the basis of our social connection as well as the foundation for various kinds of healing and deep dish trauma. Our nervous systems are not self-contained. We are not separate vessels, guys. We demonstrate for better word. They use 
they like to use really big words and really long things to explain this because they don't want you to read it. When you really dig somebody, even if they make you angry, especially sometimes if you if they make you af angry or make you laugh, those two things could fix anything. Change how you feel. I could make you hate me in a couple words. I could. I could. I could make you really pissed off. And I could make you fall in love. You will laugh. You will relax. Your body will link. But what I didn't know, it surprised me anyway, is our hearts will start beating together. And it doesn't matter how far away you are. With anger or with love, we synchronize depending on what you listen to. So if you are living on a steady diet of fear and anger and racism, it's killing you. All the things that we have been set up to hear and see and do right now we're about a disconnect this is what all the autoimmune diseases are autoimmune reacts physically at the very last stage and by the way when you start losing continence you're dying that is a stage of death, guys. This is a stage of death. And it can be long, and it can be slow, and everything that we've talked about has led up to this moment. It is what they're trying to do to us. Your body temperature lowers. You lose cont continence. You lose the ability to speak, to respond. And all of these things are a sign of death. So if you want to know how you're really doing, know this. Now, too, all of these things, especially those things, you can use the cold to absolutely hear yourself. But it is a slowing down of your system. You can use it to kill you. You can use it to actually heal you. It slows down your system enough that your body can repair. But within all animals, mammals specifically, because of certain parts of our new brain, relatively new in the scheme of things, we have a resonating, pulsing limbic system. It is a symphony of mutual exchange, internal adaptation, where two mammals or a large group become attuned to each other's inner states. It's why women, and I've seen this happen online, end up having their cycles at the same time. We become a community and we can decide what we're going to base that community on. And this notion of limbic resonance builds on all previous formulations, all similar ideas that have been used against us, unfortunately. It is why they train leaders to be so good at it. It's why I was telling you, you think our mind control training is deep? Wait till you hear the future leaders, or the kings and the queens and their children. You have to be really trained to be that messed up. Like everyone can screw up. This I get. Everyone can say an inappropriate thing, hurt someone's feelings, mess up. We all screw up. We, we screw up. It's what we do. We're passionate people. Beans. But those guys, this isn't just screwing up. This in order to kill empathy in a human being, 
that's horror that's terror and there has to be a group going through it so it's powerful enough to affect a group you with me because of what they did again 1800s this is where the majority of things were set up for now and for everybody worldwide with Freud Freud was a big proponent of this but it's also the ideas of Frederick the Great too trying to turn away from cerebral insight to the idea of a cold, emotionless, emotionless analyzation of our powers. What to do to change us. How to conquer. Because of our natural empathetic bond. The beginning of a neurological reconditioning of the planet by what they called sustained therapeutic sessions. <laughs> I don't know. I think it's been pretty freaking sustained. 200 years. Now even Benjamin Spock, have you heard of that guy? Oh, by the way, the weird, twisty, bendy pedophile I was talking about the other day, um, Kinsey, the Kinsey Report, they let that crazy you-know-what tell everyone what sexuality is like, how children are sexual, how we um, get our little freak on, those kind of things. Yeah, they find the sickest people and they train them. And then they give them positions of power. They make them psychiatrists. And they use them to work behind the scenes in all television shows and all movies. If you can sit and watch to the very end of anything, anything, guys, you will see that there's a psychiatrist, a psychologist, in every single one of those things that you're watching even the news because that is not news and most of those places admit that fine 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 rating now but it's to get us in a constant state of what they've called emotional neutrality us. Now, again, I'm not talking good or bad here. They're saying that there are things that certainly can be triggered. There were even studies on the sudden death, infant death syndrome. Yes, I know a lot of it's a lot of it's to do with the trauma of cutting a boy. That's why it happens to boys. The emotional detachment of boys in the hospital. Boys aren't picked up when they're crying in the hospital. Not as much as girls. Maybe emotional disconnect from the mother to the son because we've been so, tra so trained and so traumatized to fear men on an instinctual level now. You don't have to think about it. You most likely don't think about it. You probably would fight me hearing this, saying, not me. I don't feel that. I love the men in my life. But think about it unemotionally. You know how women are with the girlfriends? It's kind of like a wife, and I know, guys, that feels, it feels kind of funny, and I realize guys have the wrong idea of what girls do with each other, but, I mean, there's a bond there. Like, your best friend is your wife. 
like you know like it would hurt you more to break up with your best friend that you've had for years than any boyfriend a lot of times husbands and you just don't break up with them guys are going this way too because we've been so traumatized about each other so it's almost impossible for us to fight together we are talking about and I found this book and you'll laugh and I'm gonna put up bits and pieces of it but it was written in the 1600s it's called mood contamination I'm talking about this stuff emotional contamination Again, it's all about the theory of love. Each time we meet another human being and honor their dignity, you help everyone around you. Physically, mentally, emotionally, this is proven. It is not up for a debate. And everyone they talk to is helped. Hearts resonate with ours in exactly the same way the strings of a unplucked violin vibrate with the sounds of a violin played nearby, just like that. That they have called mood contamination limbic resonance so if that same person is filled with fear or hatred by just walking in a room you're not imagining it you feel it you feel it before they come in it is immediate it is the speed of light it is the thing faster than the speed of light and unless you are very mindful, a person's negative state will begin to overtake your own. Doesn't matter how many years of meditation, your Zen pot, spot, your chocolate intake, your oxytocin. When a joyful, expressive person walks in the room, you feel that state as well and it changes you they know very well what they're doing to us the dance of this resonance you know it's been said that the job of a head of a school is tough. What about their spouses? Whatever psychological pain a head of a school has, so does his or her spouse and their family and their friends who all feel a similar pain either directly or through their connection to that person. Spouses, as a matter of fact, second-hand emotion, believe it or not, you are far more helpless from a second-hand emotion because you are unable to do anything about it. So the spouse of that mythical head of a university can't do anything about it. A particularly difficult situation for that their husband right and for that reason their suffering is invisible and as a matter of fact emotionally harder to bear so no no matter how cold you think you are you have to be the worst kind of a psychopath psychopath that they've had to make exist. If somebody on one side of the scale again, 
two sides of the scale, two sides of the same being, the same coin. One who feels everything, one who feels nothing. Both have good and bad points. All modern neuroscience supports what I'm telling you right now. That love doesn't, isn't just a word. It is spread. Like cancer is spread. Like MS may be spread. And know the disconnect with your physical body is a freaking problem. Work on that. But it's what they want all of us to do. It is a physical manifestation of a psychopathy. You know what I mean? It is a very big problem. I'm speaking about myself here. Because, you know, have it. Part of it is empathy, of course. When you feel pain to a certain extent, all human beings, like all animals, that's why the animals in the zoo have a tendency to f sit in their cage and curl up in a corner. Till now, of course. Now what's happening is something completely different and they are fighting back and they are attacking and they are getting smarter. Prove it. Still, the bias towards thinking, our worship of the cognitive persists. We tend to believe that we change your brains by encountering and assimilating new information. <coughs> Sorry. Neocortex only. Through thought. But that's wrong. On a deeper level. More emotionally primitive level. Because they are calling emotions primitive just like they are trying to say you are pod people so you are alien because we are seeds. We are from seeds. The idiots are making concern. Thirteen billion dollars because no one has had sex with them or something. I'm sorry, but I can't look at it anyway. <laughs> Maybe you should meet a girl. Or a boy. I don't judge. Grow man. Stay away from our kids. But anyway. Whether you believe it, whether they believe it or not, your soul and your body does know this. It is important. It helps us explain the power of love. The sustaining power of marriage, which, with their models of how we are, makes zero sense. That's why they're trying to push it away from marriage. That you cannot really bond. There is no reason. We should all just be hitting it and quitting it. Crude, but you feel me. <laughs> It explains well some teachers are superb and others are not and it's not about the facts it is whether or not you feel connected person who goes out of their way to feel connected does connect a person who takes time before a gathering a gathering of it any kind like this like this is a gathering I know we are told we're not in the same room it means nothing it absolutely means something and because you've taken the time out to listen to me I am going to be diligent on this because when I find out how many ways that you know they have screwed us coming and going and set us up 
this is a very big idea. If I feel better that day, if I take the time to feel better, and you are here, which is freaking awesome, by the way, and I don't even have to tell you what I've done to get here. That's the coolest part and the scariest part. Because you cannot help knowing already. You come and, you know, you listen and you wait and you listen. But you never really know what you're going to get from someone. Right? Whatever they've done before they've got to you. Before the guy goes and speaks on television, before the guy goes and touches your hand, by the time he touches you or says hello, it is too late. And when you leave that, you are spreading that to people who love you, people who walk by you, all of those things unless you're very, very aware. You can control that too. Just practice. Go into some place really busy. Try and detach yourself. You will see that people will walk by you like you don't exist. It can be done. But now that we know these things, and all of us here, we, we, we probably all like movies and watch and stuff and listen to people's shows. Being aware of what can happen, centering yourself, is our job right now. Yes, there are big problems. Yes, it looks like they're going to get their violence because people are being triggered and they can't help it. If they weren't being triggered, it wouldn't be happening, right? We here are brothers and sisters. Yeah, we freaking fight sometimes. But we need to be on that. Every move we make from now on is life and death. And I do not say this lightly. We can choose how we go out from here. Whether or not we have chosen as a species and it just takes enough of us. We might not be consciously aware of this. But there are some choices being made on this planet right now by us. that are problematic at best. I'll just put it that way. We don't have to be like them. Be aware of every thought you have. Conscious of it. Change yourself. Because you can. You're powerful enough to do this. Science remain sterile and lifeless when left to fully explain the moment of our inception and conception sorry guys I gotta play some music maybe not okay back sorry about that so I'm gonna ask you something at the end of the show about how I felt about that phone call <laughs> don't answer now hold it but anyway, to approach the origin of what we truly are, and that point, I think there are pretty clear proofs ahead of us. Things that we can do. Because there will be a separation. There is a separation that we can tell. There are people that we can only save by being ourselves and being right. The same friction that occurs when two opposite poles come together. This is the Big Bang. It is a sensual act. This is what happened between your mom and your dad and also when the universe came into existence. Something that has been made extremely 
complex, but it is really simple. With a countless number of organisms in existence, we are not only tasked with finding our beginning, but our connection to them as well. Everything. These discoveries have been obscure in the past. Ludicrous, as a matter of fact, where it comes to mind. Ideas have been forced upon us through a world of academia, serving to make manners far worse. This is all. This is monkeys, this is aliens, this is random selection. This is everything. And if you don't know where you came from, you will not know where to go next. The answer to our beginnings are encoded in the way we arrive here on Earth. And don't be surprised when I bring stuff up that is pretty obvious because you've always had these answers. Every instance, if you write something on the palm of your hand and then place it close to your face, you can't read it. That's the best example of where knowledge of this death, how it is always hidden. So let's make a couple connections that I may have kind of slipped over. And they only require a tiny, 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 tiny bit of maturity to solve. So to avoid saying everyone and everything, I would say 99% of life makes its way to physical existence through some sort of sexual union. So why is it hard to see the same friction that occurs when two opposite poles come together? How would the universe be any different than our implosion into life? Something that was already self-sufficient, divided, birthed, or exploded itself in to an infinite amount of expressions that we call us, them, it, those, and on and on and on and on. The knowledge of this, being fractal is encased in every spiritual tradition. Some speak of an origin point as being like an androgen that divides itself infinitely, procreating from its own self. Others speak of it as the sun containing both positive and negative forces like a dynamo continually giving off life and light. The oldest traditions elaborated further and sum it up as yin and yang, phi, or simply put, combustion. This is the system of fire versus earth, versus metal, versus water, versus wood, a never-ending cycle where each action generates the next stage. Life and existence is seen as infinite. But where do we fit? Are we the milestone or the grain? Millstone. Are we crushing or are we crushed? And I think the truth is we're both. And it's no mystery that each person has a masculine and feminine side, a left brain and a right brain, intuition and logic. And we do not just use 10% of our brain. Unfortunately, when we're really having a big thought, we only use 10% of the time. <laughs> Which is a little terrifying. But we embody two core principles and our um, magnification of various aspects of them give us character 
and strengths and vulnerabilities and likes and dislikes. So now, the big secret. What makes us different than another person if we all have the exact same origin? The answer to that is time, which can also be seen as distance. Our distance from the point of origin determines our current state. Everything that surrounds us in the current space-time we choose to inhabit reacts to our presence, further shapes, forms, fashions of reality. And to be clear, the closer you are to the origin point, the macrocosm, the more access you have to your power as everything. The further you drift, the more divided you become, the less you are aware of the core, the principle that all is what you are to begin with. So, let's do ourselves a favor for a moment and relate this to the physical interactions we have daily to see how this all works out from a grander level. This will also allow you to see the universe is not sad or troubled. That we are in division and it is the way it functions. Welcome back everyone. So you're listening to Turtle Island News. And the news on the turtle we need to learn and train ourselves for incarnation. I mean professional reincarnation because there are groups practicing this art right now by ensuring in this life that they learn the balance between all things. Well some still practice to never incarnate in to physicality again. To never take another physical body. These are choices and people can make the choice. Unfortunate, well, not fortunately, there are no mistakes here. The universe does not say, oh my god, they're hating my children, they're hurting my children, I'm going to step in. It does not do that. The act of creation itself that is holographic. It happens continuously. It never changes the blueprint. We don't have to look any further to get all the major answers of who and what we are. The moment of conception. Now please feel free to pass this on to CERN because they don't seem to get what's going on here. <laughs> the male carrying the seeds, deposit them into a womb. To increase probabilities of success, the male has replicated or cloned itself several times. Primary seed must find its way to the egg or the incubator to begin the first stage of incubation. Cosmically, you see this as the rays from the sun being emitted projected in to the receptacle of the earth. So, let's remain aware that during this process incarnation is not guaranteed. The seeds must go through a series of trials in order to succeed in becoming mature. It is the exact same for our existence after we are birthed here on earth. The process of being, the process is holographic in nature. It represents and repeats itself ad infinitum. 
We leave our mother's physical womb. We enter the Earth's womb. We leave the Earth's womb. We enter the womb of the galaxy. When we progress from the galaxy to the universe and so on. It, this is all very clear, you know. Some make it, some don't. Some go on, some don't. So the universe. The origin point is in fact an implosion or Big Bang that we are all present for based on the amount of division that occurs afterwards this gives us all the variations that we are looking at from amoeba to sun to space shuttles these elements become the children of the galaxy and just as a parent some of them has the exact same type of child there are a great deal of variations all interacting with one another on one level or another. All new things are formed from different energies in various states coming together creating a combination of both principles giving us something unique but merging timelines. And that creates a signature. Fairly simple I think. But from this, obviousness, simplicity, we have the inner alchemy showing all the secrets that have remained cloaked, obscured by the learned men who just kept it for one tiny group of men. They call themselves the White Brotherhood. You can guess where they're from. All existence or external applications are in constant use all around us. Unfortunately, not all to our benefit. A clear connection between the ocean and space. Many of the elements in unison forming who you are a being comprised of stardust and remarkable possibilities and properties cross the spectrum of sound and shape and color. This is the universal language. This is the language of our souls. And there's a universe going on right inside you. You are well the only being missing is the one that they call God. We live on a planet that most think God is in the sky or anywhere but here. We have now seen that the Supreme is in and all around us in everything. The next stage is to recognize it fully inside you. When you have learned that you are Supreme you return to yourself. You go home. And the ocean and space has always been synonymous in all ancient traditions and there is a reason for this. Anyone who spent decent periods on the ocean will attest that there are truly no limit to what you can see there. Numerous amounts of life forms it can be baffling, right? And if you think the different characters and aspects of life identify them as energies, you will find yourself in possession of an, an alchemical emporium, a storehouse of forces in every variation you can imagine. Life has always been seen as beginning in the ocean or space depending on the culture. Deep in the ocean it is said that the water is so rich in minerals it is inanimate and fertile all on its own. Likewise some see dark matter of space as being the same thing. This is the prima materia some sort of some sort anyway that anything can be made of. 
and it shows you once more that there is an above, so below. Connection to everything. And finding the above correspondence to something you are interacting with below will just prove that one of your greatest methods and figures things out and in. 71% of the Earth's surface is covered in water. The ocean holds, at this point, 96.5% of all of it. You can see this same ratio, the same comparison with space and how many plants and stars fill it. You know what I mean? While well, most remains uninhabited, we'll leave that for a moment, but the truth here is the ocean and space teeming with abundant life. Most of it remains highly gelatinous. In the case of the ocean and beyond, the visible spectrum of light when it comes to space. Connection between the two becomes obvious when you think of, again, above, below, nature of everything. Space physical correspondence to the ocean. And all ancient esoteric knowledge highlights the divine feminine as being the ocean, Marina, Mary, as in maritime. She is Ma'at, matter, mom, the letter M, being the symbol also for waves and vibrations and combs and spirals. She is curvy and spirals. A smooth, nurturing life force. But few know just how exact such a statement is because her veil is sovereign, sovereign, seldom lifted. Meaning must come out, but never, or most anyway, will never find a way back in, back through the portal. And the key symbolism behind all the divine feminine that goes beyond the female human body is actually a force and it is always the same spirals indicating the spiral force witnessed within life as the Mer Milky Way and your fingerprints the pentagram representing phi shells representing housings, the ocean, and waves, and vortices, and large breasts symbolizing abundance, water, milk, foam, nourishing, the vesica, the concave, triangles, representing the portal, the opening of the womb, identical to the black hole. But it be far too much for the Brotherhood <laughs> to say, Oh my God, we secretly love women, but they need to die. And all things related to them. So approximately 300 years ago, time known as the Enlightenment Era, the Age of Reason. This was the advent of social and mental juggernauts. Voltaire, Johann Wolfgang von Goethe, Bacon, Francis, not the bacon eat, <laughs> and so many other so-called distinguished gentlemen. What most don't know is that this was the most recent time that higher truths were actually discovered and for the most part comprehended. What was uncovered never made it to the commoner as most of the knowledge stayed within the ranks of today's elite. 
the societies which spawned from the Academy of Science and the Royal Society of London and the accepted Freemasonry, just to name a few, as we've gone over before. What we call today's modern secret societies actually formed during that Enlightenment era. Just keep in mind, a real secret society would still be a secret. <laughs> and you can see how they use the knowledge discovered for the most part to gain advantage over us, all the rest of the humanity. And there have always been golden ages society that brought about by ruling powers when a monarch takes to the throne whom is interested in learning the inner workings of creation, in most cases to prolong his or her own dominion. This has happened several times throughout history stemming all the way back to the beginning. Veronic Dynasty is the erection library of Alexandra, and the same method has always been used. The Pontitate sends out an edict, promising someone a handsome reward to bring things rare and unique to the council, whatever the council's called at the time for examination, um, be it ancient manuscripts or strange animals or, or rare, scarce minerals or ancient relics, it doesn't matter. This never fails to supply whatever the council is with large amounts of data gathered from the most remote parts of the planet to be examined. Always done like this. And without going into much depth, because we've done it before, the Enlightenment era, in consideration of primary focus, we only need to hone in on to one piece of work. Ernest Heinrichs Phillips August Heckels. I know that's the one friggin' name. His work called the Radiolaria, which I've talked about before, and nothing more since some of his later works greatly influenced by the ruling factions and the emerging, emerging Nazi Germany, set up once again by the Prussian Academy that I told you about Tuesday. So it changed a lot. The Enlightenment before that was killed. But anyway, it's very clear that during those times, writing the wrong thing or going too far into your own theories when writing a scholarly work would end up in you falling down an elevator shaft onto some bullets. Oh wait, that's before the bullet thing. Okay, so at least ridicule, banishment, death, mutilation. Anyway. What was gleaned from his work, the Radiolaria Protozoa, pulled from the ocean, whether anyone caught it or not, was the actual origin to all plants and trees, simple and complex life forms, geometry, occult symbolism, cymatics, even cultures and religious preferences. very convincing examples of how the ocean along with incredible amount of articles that inhabit it in fact are the origins of much the ideas propagated on land and you can go to Turtle Island News info and look at all the pictures that look like helmets there's even a couple that look like the Virgin Mary symbol and so similar to all the ideas of the church, especially the Holy See, the Divine Feminine, her 
creatrix. <laughs> That's what they're calling it. So it's the cervix. Will you say cervix, please? You know, I would like to grab these murdered men and just say, see? <laughs> and shake them a little bit. Not too much, just a little bit. <laughs> Even some of the images look like UFOs, you know, and there seems to be no limit to the inspiration and the connection between the ocean and space in the mind of mankind and the mind of the mother herself. And since sound and shape and color all have a connection, you can read from the works of art a timeline over billions of years of complex changes, evolutions. Mentally you discover and comprehend the patterns used to create life. Physically, you witness structures of greatness that survived all time, all spirituality. You become united with a vast part of your long lost family. The true missing link, it's missing because it's been taken from us. There is no creature. There is all creatures. There have been unprecedented plagiary from our mother, our nature, and the divine feminine force when it comes to matters of creation and occult matters alike. Pentagrams become symbol of the devil rather than phi-based patterns witnessed within many life forms, including the procession of the planet Venus, the Maltese crosses lent to the beginning of the Illuminati origin, belonging to a band of hospitable knights, protecting Christians. Mary becomes externalized into maritime goddess of justice, governing from the sea via docked courthouses. It's no doubt that we all have a connection with the deep and with the connection is being exploited down to the fiber of our very being and instinct. Even flashing the geometry of such a prehistoric connection triggers a feeling of remembrance as we see the origins of our power our expression. The straight line and all of that geometry is a telltale sign of the corrupted symbolism. Nature always uses a curve, always uses a spiral. A straight line is how true esoteric knowledge becomes altered to fit an agenda those that conspire to keep humanity in division behind the wall or the law. It is a little known fact that all elements can be found in space and in the ocean. You find them one place, you find them in another without struggling with unnecessary questions of which one came first. It just, it doesn't matter, really. Just say that any meteorite that has ever entered our atmosphere has found at least a small portion of its genetic makeup scattered to the winds to be eventually immersed in the ocean, joining the countless amounts of other organisms in union because everything here is a little bit naughty. <laughs> naughty by nature. <laughs> now, this is where it takes you to make the connection. The advent of alchemy had its origins in the creation of life. To turn dirt, which is basic matter, into gold, which is complex life. 
This is seen every day. When the male or the female eats just about lifeless matter, then turns it into a seed or an egg. This um, revelation, I guess, of true alchemy kept so intensely guarded that most real alchemical works are so encrypted but they don't even know what they're reading, but it's just to hide the knowledge of the obvious. We're made to believe that alchemy has only has to do with transmutation of metals. And while it is prominent form of alchemy, it is not the beginning. Ancient alchemy knew that even the crucibles and the vessels they used were modeled after organs of the body in an attempt to mimic their use. This is showing up again. Kesh's work, Kesh work does this a lot. That's why I was kind of drawn to it to see what he's doing. Only recently works have surfaced again. The book of Aquarius by, um, well we don't know who wrote it. Anonymous. I don't know if it if it was Bacon or another guy, but it was one of the first anonymous. Anon wrote it. <laughs> anyway, it hits to utilizing actual body fluids like urine to def perform alchemy rather than metals, and then administering it to oneself as an elixir after methodical distillation process, because you can actually get gold out of urine, but it's supposed to be distilled. You're not supposed to drink it like that. And that's just gross, by the way. But it's the distillation of fluids, even bile. So, the truth, anyway. Its existence has a blueprint. And once the blueprint is discovered, it can be used to build or destroy anything. As it contains both properties in order to remain perpetual. All things have life and death in them. This is the way of the infinite. This is the way of the mother. Money, just an example, how the alchemical principle of turning dirt, in this case paper, into gold has been exploited since you can now buy gold with basically worthless paper. Something that has basically no value is exchanged for something of great value. So to discover the bl blueprint of life, since when they have this wisdom, this wisdom in your possession now, you have the key to unlock every door. I am a fellow explorer, a companion on the path. On the path with you, sharing these realms of knowledge and application that I have just already breached. The alchemical cabinet of elements and shapes and colors and sounds are all an integration, an integral part to creating what would appear to be an infinite amount of variations. Finding a way to begin to adjust our makeup for optimal performance, beginning with elements and essences, the things we consume on a daily basis. What you eat should already start to have more meaning to you. Consuming life or consuming death, but don't really go crazy about it. 
you know. Don't go crazy about anything. In that era, 1600s, 1780s. It, but you should probably take the one away because that was made up too. But anyway, cultural intelligent forces in Western Europe emphasized reason, analysis, and individualism rather than all traditional lines of authority. It was promoted by philosophies, local thinkers, and urban coffee houses and salons and Masonic lodges. It challenged the authority of institutions that were deeply rooted in society, especially the Catholic Church. There's much talk of ways to reform society with, I don't know, tolerance, science, skepticism, Philosophers, including Bacon, Descartes, John Locke, um, Barak, Spinoza, Pierre Bale, Voltaire, Sir Isaac Newton, all influenced society by publishing widely read reforms. Upon learning about the enlightened views, some rulers met with the intel intelligentsia, if you like, and tried to apply these reforms, such as allowing for tolerance, allowing for accepting multiple religions, and what became known as enlightened um, absolution basically, coinciding with the Age of Enlightenment, with scientific revolution spearheaded by Newton. These new ideas and beliefs spread around the continent, were fostered by an increase in literacy due to departure from solely religious texts. Beautiful publications, a change of beauty, scholarly texts. A lot of these ideas proved influential. And then came the death and the slaughter and the fight. Revolutions sponsored by the rich. Enlightenment followed by an opposing intellectual movement known as Romanticism, which should have been great, but instead we got the death and the things like that that I told you about Tuesday. From that, there was a conscious effort to stop what we could do naturally, and they made a list of frequencies that can affect the human mind and the body. Brainwave frequencies. These frequencies associated with various mental states. Using brainwave entrainment, you can coax your brainwave to certain frequencies. Doing so, achieve the mental state associated with that frequencies. Healing frequencies. These that, you know, various parties claim can be used to heal in illness. Many different kinds stimulate some region of the body. You can call them chakras if you like. I know a lot of people get mad at me when I do so. Organs. Archons. That's what they are. The medium. You should do this. Various, of course. Some of these parties um, use devices that generate EM fields like a flute or tones or your rhythm. Then natural phenomenon frequencies. This is just natural frequencies that occur in nature. Humans 
resonance, by the way, which is increasing, which is why things are going kaboom all over the earth and planes falling from the sky, and more trains slamming into each other, and more spills. Big metal objects carrying dangerous things. Bad idea. Now, we have some problems because of these things. Because they know our specific organ and muscle resonance. They know what can cause pain, trauma, addiction, arthritis, depression, brain damage, drug addiction, muscle pain, confusion. I actually have these written down. Which one does what? I'm not saying them. Absent-mindedness, dizziness, fear, long-term memory loss, the unwillingness to work. Tingling, blood pressure rises, or, f or drops. They can also stimulate affection, affection, what you like, confusion, anxiety, low reaction time, depression, insomnia. These are all very well documented, old. They already know these things. They know exactly what to do to trigger you. So when I've told you that, you know, the new stuff that I've read in the last couple of years, know that this is very, very old and being used against you. Next, religion. That was all done specifically and being used against us specifically. Of course. They know exactly what to do to trigger us. When I've told you there were signs that all across you, Europe and all across the world, the same symbols. The cross, that actually looked more like a swastika or the four corners with the circle on it or you know, the medicine wheel thing that the cross on its own the star which is the sun and the moon could be the old mother religion it's whatever it was here we all knew it these were not scary things but no age since the third century of Christian of Christians era stood in more imperative need of clarification of nature and the meaning of that element in human life called religion than does the present time. It appears now that nothing but such a clarification could save us as all the institutionalized expression is hurrying us towards death and disaster from events happening right now it seems as if a radical economic devastation will sweep the word world into socialized government um, enterprise. Socialism, it's not the scariest you think, but the majority of this world right now, right now, is revolting against the government. The class system that has super rich and super poor. People in the South, and you know, it's what I've told you before and told you for years, we are seeing the mass migration of people North because the South is being raped of their resources. You know, where we can have people dying by the thousands on boats, 
trying to get to Europe. It's not that America and Canada and Europe are great places. It's because people are starving to death. Will we or will we not open our hearts? When I read the news, when I see what's happening on this continent, what we are doing to supposedly our brothers and sisters, it's not looking too good right now. People who are supposed to be so Christian, burning Christian churches, because people are the wrong color inside. And of course, you know, we've been set up to do this. We've been set up. I got that. But if there is not a time for us to stand up, there never was. Religion as the opiate of the mass. This, it has been used to rally people and steer them in certain directions. Absolutely true. And the preachment that heaven would compensate for the hardships of earth made police and militia considerably less necessary. It's been used by the possessing class, put it that way, subtle psychological device to facilitate putting people in a docile mood, submissive, content under, well, under the stick. We're not so under the stick so much anymore, but it's probably much worse since a lot of people will fight and say, no, I am not a slave. Okay, go to work. Drink that beer. Fight with your brother because he's the wrong color or he's believing in the wrong God. Or, you know, <sighs> believe what you want. Just don't be an a-hole about it. Is that so friggin' tough? I could have written every religious thing in history in a couple words. Don't be an a-hole. There, that's the rule. Don't take other people's shit. <laughs> okay, so two things. <laughs> but seriously. <laughs> All too certainly religion has been exploited, okay? In a way to give substance to serious fragments. <laughs> the sponsors of religion have themselves la are largely to blame for all of this. Things that have taken root in the minds of masses. For this particularly vicious by byproduct of economic struggle, might have been avoided if all parties concerned had known the true place of religion in this moral life of ours. It is likely true that humans seeking an end will turn to um, advantage any influence or instrument that comes in hand when it's needed. But for this, I guess this is not the moment to lend itself to one or another motive. It doesn't matter. Things are usually neutral. They become good or bad as employed by good or bad morals or for, you know, some benefit or if you use them for harm. Most people are so ill-advised on sheer logical grounds to crucify any religion because, you know, it has been used to blind you. It's not an answer either. 
other left-wing parties have won control. They have persecuted religion, taught atheism in schools, and this is fact. It is also madness. Radical revolutions always go too far. They destroy valuable things. They get rid of dirt that may have actually saved us. Religious and religion is usually established to conserve important ideas. Radicalism is against what is conservative. But conservation is a necessity. <laughs> so we fall <laughs> we fall struggling into the words that have always been a trap. The golden mean must ever come out of the clash. of sides that are probably the same. But when you go into extremes, things look so different. So various, you know. Trimmed of all the pomp and circumstance, all the fancy gowns and the boys with power and some of them being married men, even in the church, well, especially the Catholic Church. So many things have been used to bind us and divide us and to shatter us, take us kind of limb for limb. These things have been used all the time, you know, and of all the strange anomalies of religious prediction, perhaps the weirdest is the most astonishing fact that through religion, and though it's lost its place of acceptability, when people get afraid, they turn back to it and still quote from it this chapter says we're all going to die. Or whatever it says is going to happen. Are we rational or are we not? I guess it comes down to what you want to believe. If we have no choice, then it doesn't matter. If we affect our brothers and sisters by our very, I don't know, intent, then everything matters. And I know it sounds weird. Do some things matter or does nothing matter? We are on this earth together, yes? And it's obvious that the people that took over destroyed, and they're working to destroy almost everything that matters to us. Family, which matters. The love between neighbors, which still matters. Family, home, all the beautiful things that we can just enjoy about each other. The fact that we can be all different and still enjoy our differences. While we keep the gentle Jesus standing outside the fast closed door, as one Christian hymn says, we keep him nailed on the cross of suffering instead of seating him at the throne. The suffering servant 
I would like that to be over, don't you? Not only crippled and deformed, but actually cut into pieces, dismembered. As in the case of most of the gods, Osiris, Bacchus, Saraswati, many of the other gods, as a matter of fact. Indeed, it is a fact, never quoted, that several of the most austere in all churches, misled by these descriptions, applying to them whatever was important that an earthly man, Jesus, is actually on record as affirming that Jesus of Nazareth was not beautiful in feature or figure, but ugly and deformed, disdained by cosmic and karmic machinery to incarnate the Deva intelligence a bit unwillingly, we are told made some adventure entered animal bodies. They devised not the virgin's womb, a statement that can only be taken to be a reference of their repeated rebirth, I guess, from mothers or saintly maidens. But why do we have to be one or the other? Are they so afraid? What are they so afraid of? Why do they hate us but dressed like women? With rings and jewelry and everything. If white people hated black people so much they wouldn't be doing the dances or singing their songs or suddenly mysteriously growing an ass. No offense, but you're noticing some white girls got butts now. <laughs> so, all the things being presented to us are obviously a lie. We obviously like each other. And there's nothing that they've been able to do to really kill that fact. So whatever religion you believe in, I would like you to believe in it and just be good to each other. Some of us are going to make it through this, and even if we don't, even if I have to just face myself, I don't want to come back next time and say, oh my god, I screwed this up. Be as good as you can be, act nobly, with honor. I love you guys.